Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody, and just like the doctor drew it up, I was traveling as SMU was announced as a member of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Let that sink in, all you want, Mustang fans. It is official. SMU, Cal, and Stanford have joined the ACC, and they'll be doing so in time for the 2024 football season. Uh, which coincides with the opening of the Gary Weber end zone complex in Ford Stadium as well. And they get the invite on the eve of their season opener against Louisiana Tech. Thanks for listening to the podcast. A quick reminder before we get going, a lot of people have already jumped on this, but it is just a dollar to join the site for your first month or 50% off annual subscriptions. That deal for OnThePonyExpress.com is going on for the foreseeable future as people are excited about this move for SMU to the ACC. We've already got recruits reacting on the site. We've got comments from SMU leadership. We've got much more to come. And if you are watching this, be sure to check out our podcast with SMU alum, Bill Armstrong. Uh, Obviously his name is on Armstrong Fieldhouse. We've been partnering with him and Epic Wines to bring you guys the Walkin' Strong portion of the podcast, uh, which kicked off earlier this week. And to bring you guys back, Monday, Bill and I recorded our first edition of the podcast, and we got the first really pretty concrete news that SMU was going to be invited to the ACC as we were filming, which obviously brought a lot of excitement if you saw the intro video. Um, and as well as uh, the follow-up video, which was talking about the ACC invite that went SMU's way. Then, obviously, things happened through the course of the week with the tragic shooting at North Carolina, the opening of the ACC headquarters, college football playoff meetings, uh, the hurricane that hit uh, you know, the Florida coast and then went its way up into the Carolinas. And so the question was, well, when is this going to be pushed across the finish line? And we got that answer late Thursday when uh, news broke that the presidents were going to meet on Friday and make that decision. And again, like I told our subscribers on OnThePonyExpress.com, the feeling I got obviously early in the week and even late last week was that the vote had flipped and SMU was going to get that invite. Now we found out that it was NC State going against North Carolina and voting for SMU to get into the league. Uh, Things on the surface did get a little dicey when the North Carolina board, some members of it, did release that statement opposing the vote. Well, that was in anticipation of the vote being passed, uh, which we were going into Friday, believing that it would. And early Friday, um, I was not expecting uh, it to be that early. I didn't have a time on on, uh, the president's meeting for the ACC but it got pushed through and uh, shout out to Southwest uh, Wi-Fi for hanging in there uh, just for, just long enough for me to uh, get the tweet out and get it posted on uh, the board. This is um, a monumental moment in SMU's history. Uh, President Turner called it a historic milestone. Obviously, uh, David Miller, the uh, chairman of the Board of Trustees, uh, was excited calling it an important day for SMU. It'll impact Uh, the entire collegiate experience at SMU in a positive way, as well as raising the profile of SMU on a national level. And to give you guys some of the background on this move, this is one that did not come overnight. This did not come when the Pac-12 was finally being picked apart and dissolving uh, as we knew it. And now we know that the Pac-12 is is you know, on still on live support, but now even more so with losing Cal and Stanford. This is something that David Miller in particular and President Turner have been working on for well over a year. And many people around SMU have been working on a move to the Power Five ranks. I mean, now for, well, you know, over a decade. But David Miller over the last year plus, two years, made it his personal mission to get SMU into a Power Five conference. And so if you're an SMU fan, if you're an SMU alum, uh, send your Christmas cards his way because uh, Santa came early uh, with this 
invite um, to the ACC for SMU. And David Miller spent countless hours on this, um, flying wherever he needed to, to meet with people, to lobby people, to get people in SMU's corner. It started with guys like Oliver Luck and some of their consultants. Uh, it even expanded to George W. Bush and Condoleezza Rice, who ended up advocating for SMU. And the job that he and the rest of the donors are about to undertake to make this happen is pretty incredible. Um, Ross Dellinger, um, Pete Thamble, guys like that, the national side have now reported and it's been confirmed that SMU will forego nine years of revenue from the ACC TV deal. Uh, this is a um, huge investment in the university long term for its athletics program uh, programs to join this conference. And, you know, some people will sit there and say, wow, nine years, that's a long time to forego that revenue. But what SME will get is they're going to get that invite to the club into the power five ranks to give them that credibility that they've been missing on the recruiting trail, that they've been missing um, at least in their corner if they were going to make a run to a college football playoff or a New Year's Six. Now they're going to have that quote, I mean, power four at this point uh, logo on their chest as they compete. And that's going to be in their corner. And I mean, talking with people around the program this week as, you know, we reported on the site for our subscribers that this was something that was likely to happen. And you already saw people jump on and try to secure basketball season tickets, football season ticket sales spiked a little bit. But not only that, but the amount of merchandise, the amount of donations that SMU will get from people who have been supportive of SMU, but maybe not up to their full, full potential, will now go up in a huge way. And that includes NIL support. Um, talking with a couple of sources, we've already seen some donations come in on SMU's end uh, for NIL and, and obviously the, the support uh, monetarily from big donors to make this move happen. So. This is a galvanizing moment for SMU. Um, you can point back to when Sonny Dykes left and NIL was uh, put together um, for SMU and, and that really held the roster together. And that was a motivating moment for this university. But you can point to this moment now that it has been pushed across the finish line and say that SMU now can operate like they've wanted to for years. And we can go back and, and talk about how they missed opportunities like a TCU did to capitalize on the direction of college athletics and join the Big 12. But that is in the past. This is a new era for SMU. They're going to be able to go out and recruit better players, better transfers, better recruits, all of those things across the board uh, in their, in their you know, athletic programs. But Football is the one that is certainly going to garner the most attention. And this is something that the staff has been working toward under the assumption that they are, they're going to end up in the power five ranks. So we go back to USC, UCLA leaving for the Pac-12. And that created the opportunity for SMU to push more and more nationally for a power five invitation. And we know over the course of the year, George Klyovkov visited SMU. The indication from that conference was that SMU was going to get an invitation if they did expand. And obviously, George Klyovkov, you know, botched that whole situation. He botched the whole situation with the TV deal. And that led to SMU obviously not getting that invite, not getting into that league. But SMU worked its angles dating back to the spring on the ACC. And I reported it throughout the process on our site um, and, and the subscribers that are on there can back that up. This is something that it wasn't Pac-12 or bust. It wasn't um, what's SMU going to do if they don't get into the Pac-12. They had always been working that angle of joining uh, the ACC. That was the desired destination long term. They felt like it was a good fit with the programs and universities that are in that league. They felt like getting into the East Eastern time zone 
would benefit the school in a big way from an athletics perspective. And now it raises SMU's uh, level of relevance, uh, level of um, just prestige, uh, which is kind of funny because the football team is is uh, their uh, marketing uh, preseason kind of slogan looks to be something around prestige. And that is so critical for this school. So as the summer months unfolded and the Pac-12 was barreling towards that deadline where San Diego State really needed to, needed to know, um, where SMU was hoping to know, once that came and went, you really saw the overdrive happen, but it started back in the spring. SMU never gave up on the ACC and the ACC schools that were in their corner were telling them, hang tight hang tight. And what ultimately pushed us over the top is SMU willing to obviously forego a ton of revenue when it comes to ACC TV revenue, which is going to put new money um, along with Cal and Stanford into programs like Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, which did ultimately oppose uh, the expansion in the end uh, with that vote. Uh, it's one of the rare things when conferences expand that um, not everyone is uh, in agreement in the end, you know, even to promote some uh, unity among the league. Instead, it did pass 12 to 3 that SME is getting in, but they worked, those schools, they worked uh, with their consultants, with the people in their corner that were pushing for this to get it to that point where as the Pac-12 looked like it was going to lose a school or here or there, as confidence faded in the ability of George Klyovkov to get a deal done for a TV deal, SMU knew this was the moment. This was it. Because if they came out of this, even if they ended up in a watered-down Pac-12, it wouldn't be the prestige that they were looking for when it came to fielding a power five invitation. And so that's why they pushed their chips in on the ACC. They wanted it in such a way that they're willing to basically give up a decade worth of TV revenue. Now, SMU will receive college football playoff, NCAA tournament, and other revenues. You'll also see their ability to sell advertising go up, their merch sales, your ticket sales, donations, all of those things that will maybe soften the blow for this. But SMU has been preparing for this for a long time. Bill Armstrong leading the football um, program really as the lead donor has been critical in securing money and helping raise money for the Vision 2025 fund, which might as well be renamed Vision 2024 now. But that money that's earmarked to support the program when they get to the Power Five level is now invaluable. And that pre-planning is one of the reasons why SMU can go about their business as usual and not necessarily be sitting there going, well, we've got to pinch some pennies together to be competitive. They know what it takes to be competitive. Obviously, that means getting good players. That's where NIL comes in. That is being heavily funded by other supporters of SMU, uh, which is you know going to skyrocket now. Uh, this is a unbelievable moment for this program um, and school overall to now have this in their corner. Uh, it Again, it did not come overnight. It came uh, over a period of months and, and you know, well over a year that they've been working on this and now they get to reap the benefits. Um, you see the national reaction that, you know, SMU bought their way in and all those things, but this was what they had to do. This was the last lifeboat, in a sense, with college football realignment. And you see that with Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina opposing it. Um, it wasn't a situation where they would eventually say, you know what, we'll take the free money. They ended up sticking to their guns and opposing it to the end, which just maybe paints the picture nationally with other conferences of how it would have gone if SMU was going to try and make things work. You know, the Big 12 was never going to let them in. There's too many roadblocks in the state of Texas. Big 10, SEC, completely off the radar. But once the Pac-12 
became a true shell of itself, that, li that last lifeboat was the ACC and SMU knew it had to get creative to earn its spot in that league. And they did just that. So um, David Miller deserves a ton of credit. President Turner made this a massive priority for himself as well. Um, he worked with David Miller very closely on this to push it um, over the course of the year, involving other key SMU mega donors to try and again, work their angles. But this was David Miller's baby. And, you know, he deserves a statue and a matching fountain to boot um, after making this happen, because you've seen what, you know, a school like TCU benefits from when it comes to being in a power five conference. And now SMU can take advantage of that. This is a healthy league with 18 members now in it. Now, granted, at some point down the line, there's going to be that discussion among Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, well, what's next? Is there a way to get out? That's something that's going to be really hard to do with this grant of rights. But the league's future at its current TV deal is secured with 18 members. Even if all three of those schools found a way to come up with that half a billion dollars it's kind of estimated at to leave, they would not be able to renegotiate or ESPN would not be able to renegotiate this contract because it won't fall below 15 schools. So this was a very smart move by the ACC to secure its stability long-term and keep that TV deal where it's at. It's not the greatest, it's not Big Ten, it's not SEC, but it's good enough to be competitive. And now they bring in some new money each year and it's going to be a performance-based revenue sharing plan which does give SMU the opportunity to maybe earn some money back if they're able to have a successful season. I don't know the particulars exactly on how that might work if SMU was able to find a way, you know, at any point in the future to win a conference championship in the ACC. I don't know how the revenue share would work on that, but this is now a performance-based revenue sharing league, which I think is something that future um, negotiations among other schools and other leagues is going to be looked at heavily. Um, you have a lot of schools that are investing and at, in other conferences, you see schools that aren't competitive, that aren't willing to compete at the highest level, but they're in the club. Now SMU's in the club, they can use this to sell recruits. And speaking of recruits, we've talked with quite a few of the commits. We've talked to some of their top 2025 targets. We've talked to some of their 2025 four-star commits. Um, and now they have that ability to see the Power 5 level. And that is a huge selling point for a lot of these players. And we're going to see SMU you know, benefit from that. Not only that, um, not only that you're going to see uh, these recruits start recruiting more and more um they're going to be able to um go out and say hey we got this power five invite come join and that was one of my takeaways from talking with a couple of them and again their full reactions are on on the ponyexpress.com so check it out just a dollar for a month to start it off i mean it the, the community is growing like crazy it's pretty wild right now um what a day this is but um for smu's recruits there now, I'm seeing a renewed buy-in from those guys that are committed. SMU is going to work it very, very hard to flip some of these guys in the 2024 class that they maybe missed out on earlier. So that'll be something to watch. We'll have some notes on that on the site um, at some point this weekend when I'm able to uh, you know, get that online. But um, there's been some really strong reactions from recruits on this as well. So as SMU gets into the ACC in 2024. This recruiting class is going to always have played in the ACC, which is pretty wild. And SMU is going to continue to invest in NIL, invest in the transfer portal. It's going to be easier to recruit players with that Power 4, Power 5 logo on their chest. So what an incredible day uh, for SMU. The only bad thing is, is I won't be able to be there for the announcement in Armstrong Fieldhouse this afternoon as I'm in Florida seeing a, uh, another recruit. But um, this is an incredible journey. If you've been on it, 
um, from the get-go with on the PonyExpress.com. Thank you. Um, we have our, I got to give a shout out to the realignment uh, thread that I'm looking at our site right now, well over a million views since it got started back up, um, over 30,000 replies, 749 pages. That's the type of community we've got at OnThePonyExpress.com. This has been a wild ride. It's been filled with ups and downs and potential last minute um, kick to the groin uh, region. But um, now it is official. SMU's in the ACC and you can celebrate SMU fans. So that's really all I've got. I'm going to have a lot more coverage at OnThePonyExpress.com of this. But uh, what a day for SMU uh, to finally get this invite and, and now be able to pursue that true return to prominence without having that group of five moniker next to their uh, program. Just overall, they're instantly going to get more credibility long term. So um, thanks for listening to this edition. Again, subscribe to the site. Um, check us out. Again, just a dollar for a month to try us out. A ton of people have been subscribing today. Uh, it's been one of our top links. I've had Google Analytics open. So it's an exciting time. So check us out. Um, and I'll be flying back in Saturday morning, bright and early. And if the flight's on time, I'll be out there on the boulevard with some on the ponyexpress.com koozies. So appreciate all you guys who have listened to the pod and supported and followed this. Um, this is a massive moment for SMU, but also this site. Um, I'm excited to ramp up our coverage even more of what is now a Power 5 program. SMU joins the ACC, a true historic day in the school's history. So hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy SMU Louisiana Tech at 11 a.m. Central on ESPNU. We will catch you guys on the boulevard. Don't forget, we've got our after hours uh, appearance at Shug's Bagels in Mockingbird Plaza uh, with our after staying post game show on Saturday after the game. So stay tuned to our social channels for when that show will start. So hope you guys uh, celebrate this one for a while because it's a huge moment. Thanks for listening to this edition of the podcast and we'll catch you next time.